Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we'll be taking a material from Polygon.com, bringing it into Maya using our material converter, and finally rendering it out with V-Ray. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the files we'll be needing during this video. We're going to need wood flooring 044, which is one of the materials from our website, and also the material converter add-on for Maya. Now, I already have both of these saved to my hard drive, and I'll be including a link to them below this video. Now this is the uh, scene we'll be using today, a uh, very simple scene, it's just a floor plane uh, for our material to get applied to, uh, a dome light with a HDR already set up, and I'll be using the perspective camera as our, uh, as our camera to render from, and that's literally it. But before we do anything else, we need to get the material converter installed. So I'm going to go over to this custom panel, and you'll see I've already got the uh, material converter icon there. But let's walk through the process of getting it installed for you. So, take the zip file that you've downloaded from the website and extract it all into a folder. Um, I've already done so, it's sitting on my desktop here. And then within that, you'll see this installer uh, script. You need to take that and drag it anywhere on the viewport within Maya. And then it will come up with a little dialog so you can point the installation in the direction of that folder. So as I said, I put mine on the desktop and then I'm gonna go into the converter folder and then you've got another Polygon material converter folder within that. Once that's selected, hit the select folder button and then you'll get a dialog saying that the material converter has been installed. Or in my case, it's saying updated because I already had it installed. You can click okay on that and that's it. That's the converter already set up and ready to go. So let's talk about how to use it. I'm clicking on the button and then I get this little pop-up which gives us a few options to configure the converter with. The first one being the textures folder. Now this is where you tell the converter where it is you've stored the materials on your hard drive. Now in my case, that is here. And you can see I've got a whole different host of Polygon materials all ready to go. And what I could do is just select that folder and the converter would bring in all of them. Um, which might be what you want to do. You'd then have all the materials to hand and you can just assign them to the various parts of your scene. For the purpose of this video though, I'm going to just specifically bring in wood flooring 044. So with that folder selected, I'll then hit select folder and you'll see the converter says one material found. Good. The next option is the renderer. By default, the converter will look at your scene settings, uh, figure out what render you've got and automatically fill that in for you. But if for any reason you do need to change it, um, the drop down has a few options in there. Below that is the advanced settings. By default, the uh, everything's exactly how it should be. You don't need to, to change anything. Um, but if you do need to make some adjustments to the settings, that's where you do it. But I'm just gonna hit convert. Uh, you'll then get a little pop-up saying all materials loaded successfully and that's the converter done its job. That material is now loaded into Maya. So, I'm going to click on the Hypershade window, give it a second to load up and you'll see our wood flooring material is now already there. So, with the floor plane selected, I'm going to right mouse button and then or hold down the right mouse button I should say and then assign material to selection. And you'll see it's now got a, a grey colour, which means it has a material assigned to it. And if I right, hold the right mouse button again and go to the graph network, it will bring up the uh, the nodes that the converter has set up. You'll notice, or you might notice, <laughs> that the displacement nodes are not in place. To fix that, click on the final node in this little graph, and then click on the uh, input and output connections button. And that will add in the displacement shader as well. Okay, now we will be having a little play with these nodes in a moment, but before we do that, I want to see how this is looking. So I'm gonna go over to the V-Ray panel, click on the little uh, button for the V-Ray frame buffer, and then hit this interactive render button, and then give it a second. And there we go. So it's brought in our material, and already it's looking very, very good. It's uh, it's almost identical to the reference images on our website. The only thing that needs adjusting is our gloss map. Now, because different renderers have different implementations of PBR, you will notice from time to time that you do have to make slight adjustments. And in this case, our reflections are looking a little too blurred. Um, if you compare them to the reference images, 
uh, that they're a bit more reflective, a uh, bit more glossy. Uh, so we're going to have to make a mild adjustment to replicate that. So I'm going to leave that window open because it, it will continue to update as we make changes to our shader and go back to the hypershade window. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we have our, uh, our gloss map here. Now we do have a little issue here where the gloss map's currently coming out of the alpha channel. That's, um, I believe that's a bug in our converter that will be fixed probably by the time this video goes live. So let's just pretend that isn't there. Um, and what it will probably feed from is the red channel. Now you're wondering why the red channel. Now in Maya, um, different inputs have very specific requirements. Now the reflection glossiness input which is green, um, means that it's expecting a float value, um, i.e. a grayscale image, not a color one. So if I try and feed the color from the gloss into that, you'll see it's grayed out, yeah? So I've got no way of, put, of taking the color directly into the, uh, the glossiness input. But if I take any one, because all of these channels are essentially the same, yeah? The, the red, green, and blue channels are all grayscale images, and because this is a gray image, they're all identical. So I can just take the red channel, bring that into reflection glossiness, and th that's bringing our map in. Anyway, what we want to do is add some fine control over this, yeah? Now it's a little bit difficult to do it well on a gloss map. So what we're going to do is add in a couple of nodes. Uh, I'll explain first and then, and then we'll do it. We're gonna convert our gloss map into a roughness map, yeah? Then from a roughness map, we can use a multiply node, which I'll explain in detail a little bit later, um, to give us fine control over that gloss map. And then we're gonna invert it back into a gloss map and then feed it into the shader because it's a gloss map that the shader wants. A Little bit of a long-winded way of doing things, but it's the, uh, I find it's the best way. So let's just make ourselves a little bit of room here. And now we'll go to bring in our maps. So. I use the term invert, the um, term Maya tends to use is reverse, or at least that's the node for it. So let's bring in two of those. So we've now got two reverse nodes, and I'm gonna name these to indicate what it is we're doing. So this is gonna convert our gloss map to a roughness map. And then once we're done adjusting it, this will convert our roughness map Apparently I've forgotten how to type, <laughs> into a gloss map. So now I'm gonna feed the, now remember we're, we're working with that float value, um, not, the, not the color channel. So I'm gonna take the red channel and put it into input X. I'm then, then gonna take output X and put it into input X of this one. And then output X into the reflection glossiness. Now. These nodes at the moment are essentially doing nothing to our shader because we're inverting it and then inverting it back. So we're, we're gonna see no change whatsoever in our material. And that's that's exactly what we want. So that is at least working. And now I can minimize these nodes down so they don't get in the way. And you'll see with the, with the naming, it, it just helps us make more sense of what it is we're doing. So now to add in the node that's actually gonna give us some control over our gloss map. So I'm going to type in multi because it's a multiply divide node that I want. And again, we're going to be using the X input and output because we're just working with the one channel. Um, and I shouldn't have minimized that. There we go. It's just me trying to be neat before it was time. So I'm going to take the output X and plug it into the input X of the multiply divide and then take the output X and put it into the input X of the roughness to gloss. And again, still no change because we haven't actually adjusted any values, but now we definitely can minimize these to neaten things up a little. There we go. And if I, in fact, I can probably minimize that one as well. Now we need to give this a name. Now we're gonna call this uh, roughness because at this point it's a roughness map because we've inverted it. Uh, ooh, adjust, there we go. So now it's, kind of making sense as to what it is we're doing. So I go to the uh, adjust value and then under this uh, first channel, the, the X input that we used, we have this figure here under input two. Now this is a multiply operation. So we're going to be multiplying 
our roughness texture by whatever numbers in there. Now, if you multiply something by one, it doesn't change. It's, it's, the, it's exactly the same. If you multiply it by zero, the output will be zero, i.e. black, i.e. we would expect a, a completely rough, or a, a completely black roughness map, or a, once it's been inverted, a completely white gloss map, i.e. 100% reflectivity. And that's exactly what we get. See, it, the floor is now like a, a mirrored surface, which, which isn't the effect we want, but I wanted to demonstrate what the, the multiply node's doing. What we want is somewhere in the middle. So a value of about 0.65 should serve quite nicely. Let's give that a minute to render out a little. And yeah, that's now uh, uh, that's now closer to the, the reference image on our website and it's it looks a bit more like a nicely polished, clean wooden floor. Um, perhaps a little bit too clean, uh, but uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. In the next video, we'll be, we'll be a we'll be addressing that but for the purposes of this video I would say we are done. So in summary we've taken a material from polygon.com, brought it into Maya using our material converter, made a slight adjustment to the gloss map um, and then rendered it out in V-Ray.